Good afternoon, everybody. What a delight it is for me to be able to be here to spend a little bit of time with you. And I have to tell you, this is a fantastic crowd and it's so delightful to be able to come to this part of the Rotary world and to know that in every single chair that's occupied, there is a committed Rotarian or a member of the family of Rotary in some way that when they are not here, they are doing good somewhere in their community in behalf of Rotary or in behalf of humanity. And that's what really we are all about when, when push comes to shove. The time that I have, I'd like to focus on the topic, the foundation for Rotary's future is being built now. Give consideration to that, please. If you were to go back in time a year, five years, 10 years, that statement could be just as real and meaningful as it is today. Except today, it is more real and more important than ever before. This past year, we all know we celebrated with great pride the centennial anniversary of the Rotary Foundation, 100 years of doing good in the world. And we were so blessed to be able to have our own president from India serving as the chair of the Rotary Trustees during that particular time. And uh, Callian, would you stand so we can again recognize the tremendous leadership you did during a very critical year in Rotary's history. During the year though, we spent the year reflecting back on different points in time in the history of the foundation and Rotary for that matter, going back to 1917 and coming forward at various points. During the year, I was reflecting on one particular moment, actually two to be truthful. One, the first one was at the Salt Lake Convention in um, 2007, Salt Lake City, Cal uh, Utah. Bill Gates Sr., yes, that Bill Gates is the father of our Bill Gates, of the Gates Foundation. He addressed the convention at that time and he said something that has stayed with me ever since and I'd like to quote. He said, I have spent the last decade traveling around the world thinking about monstrous problems. It boggles the mind to try to make sense of how dramatically you Rotarians have changed millions of lives. And in fact, that is precisely what we have been doing from the beginning of Rotary and particularly since the evolution of the Rotary Foundation. We have been changing millions of lives. But he in particular was focusing not exclusively, but very heavily on what he had discovered relative to Rotary's work at that point with polio. Now this was just before the Gates Foundation established their official relationship with Rotary and the foundation to provide their major grants to advance our work. You see, the thing that was significant then was that he validated what we had been working on as Rotarians for a number of years and making pretty decent progress. But at the same time, he was acknowledging that our impact is far greater than we had any idea. And it was in 1988 when the World Health Assembly, because of Rotary's leadership and raising funds over the previous three years, made the decision to tackle the job of eliminating polio from the face of the earth. We made a promise to the children of the world in 1988 that we would do that job. And very quickly, we began the process of organizing. We established and worked with the development of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative and they have been our strategic and core partners, World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control, UNICEF, and many other entities, all of which are very important for us to 
realize that none of us could have achieved where we are today with polio had it not been for all of our partnerships working together. And this is one of the legacies, not only the potential eradication of polio from the face of the earth, but the ability to say to Rotary, this is how we can do a better job if, and tackle really the tough challenges of the world if we work in partnership. Now I wanna give you an update where we are today on polio. And I know many of you have been following this very closely, but you might not know the latest information. 1988, there were 350,000 cases of polio, 1,000 cases a day, 350,000 in the year in 125 countries. Last year, there were 37 cases of polio in three countries. And this year to date, as of the 1st of December, the 30th of November actually, when this data came out, we regrettably have received one additional new case of polio. So we now have 16 cases of polio. The additional one came from Afghanistan. So Afghanistan has 11 cases and Pakistan has five for a total of 16. Nigeria has no reported cases of polio. Many of you are quite aware of the box score that of all of the accomplishments that we've had. 20 million volunteers involved in uh, the eradication process over the years, 2.5 billion children immunized, 16 million cases have been prevented, 1.5 million deaths have been averted. People, children, adults, living, walking, breathing, doing things because of their having been immunized thanks to Rotarians. 14 billion have been invested, 14 billion dollars has been invested overall and really significantly, Rotarians have been responsible for raising $1.7 billion for this initiative, and that is fantastic. We need to keep in mind that the finish line is within sight. When we're down to 16 cases of polio, we don't know for sure when that last case of polio is going to be reported. Perhaps it was yesterday. But we do know this, that Bill Gates has been a partner and a close friend of Rotary in many ways, and he has reminded us that we are this close to the end. And we have signed on recently John Cena, a worldwide recognized uh, world wrestling champion that is particularly uh, important when it comes to the younger people in the world. They're paying attention to him. He's done some videos online about polio and Rotary, and he has captured their attention. Now, when the time comes for us to begin the actual countdown to history, we know that when the last case of polio has been reported, we have to wait 36 consecutive months with no new cases of polio reported. The World Health Organization estimates that it might be along about the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th month before they would feel comfortable comfortable to begin to talk about the fact that we are on the path to have polio eradicated. At the point of about 24 months with no cases of polio around the world, Rotary will be very likely prepared to begin the official countdown from its perspective to, to make history, our countdown to history at that point. In the next three years, one of the reasons that I wanted to share some of this information with you is to know that we are this close, but the job isn't done and we still need 36 months with no reported cases of polio, is to remind you and to ask you each, please, in your own clubs, if you will be sure to help energize the membership in your club to continue to seek to raise funds at the same level we have basically this year and, and in recent years. We have 400 million children that need to be immunized in, in 60 uh, at-risk countries in particular that are of greatest concern to us. We need to continue the disease surveillance activities that we've been working on in 70 countries that are considered at greatest risk and 150,000 polio funded workers need to be employed and working each year over the, each of the next three years in order to achieve this job. So the job isn't done until we have in fact completed our 36 months of no cases of polio. This is gonna cost $1.2 billion through 2020. 
And I must say that uh, the Gates Foundation stepped up. If you were at the Atlanta Convention, you know that Bill Gates came forward and said, look, we're going to raise our challenge. Uh, we're going to keep the two to one match, but we're going to go from 70 million up to $100 million. If Rotarians, if you will join us and you will raise from the 35 million you've been raising each year, raise that number up to $50 million. So for uh, that's $450 million that Rotary has committed against that 1.2 billion that needs to be raised over the next few years. And that's 50 million a year from the Rotarians and the two to one match from the Gates Foundation will be $100 million and that brings the total to $450 million. So meanwhile, while we have been working on polio and now at close to the end game on polio, here is where the, the rubber meets the road in terms of Rotary's work and focus on other priorities that we have been working on uh, for quite a number of years and decades in some cases. And again, the foundation for Rotary's future is being built now. And one of the ways that we're building that future is through our Rotary Peace Centers program that was started in the year 2002. And to date, after all of these years of activities at six Rotary Peace Centers around the world that you might be able to see on the map, we have had 1,052 Rotary Peace Fellows graduated from the program and are now out around the world in over 100 countries doing good to build peace. This has been a critical part of Rotary's priorities over the last uh, decade and then some, and we see this as one of the highest priorities going forward. Also during the past uh, uh, number of years, when we celebrated the centennial last year, we look back from the 1917 through this past year and we realized that Rotarians raised and we have invested in major projects more than $4.1 billion through last year. And these basically have gone to our areas of focus activities. And we are so grateful that we've been able to raise the dollars, but most importantly, turn right around and invest them in a very significant way to do good in the world. And over the period of time, we have seen how the areas of focus and the activities in each of those contribute to peace. And this is one of our major objectives is the advancement of the cause of peace uh, throughout the world. And Rotarians have been working on this, actually going back to the earliest years in which Rotary has been around. Now, in, in 2017, when Arch Klump came up, 1917, when Arch Klump came up with the idea of the Rotary Foundation, what he said is, we need to build an endowment fund that will actually be, have permanent funds with the spinning off of dollars that can be used in order to carry on our programs. And to date, after all these years, as of the 31st of October, we have one billion, $187 million in the Rotary Foundation's endowment fund. Think of that. Think of that. Indeed, it deserves a round of applause. These come from two basic sources. Outright gifts and commitments that have been made by Rotarians and even non-Rotarians around the world. And a number of individuals have made commitments through their estate plans and made outright gifts to the Rotary Foundation. During this past year, the foundation trustees have set a goal to think out into the future of how are we, in fact, building Rotary's future by what we do today. And so we've established a goal by the year 2025, the Rotary Foundation will target to, to raise a total $2 billion, $25 million by that particular date that year. And uh, we are halfway there already with the funds that we have committed against it. When we, re when we reach that $2 billion, $25 million in 2025, one billion of those uh, will be in actual gifts that are cash invested and available to spin off operating dollars for the Rotary Foundation. And the other one billion, 25 million dollars will be legacy commitments that will be paid at a later date. But here's the thing that's really important and in the spirit of what Arch Klump was all about when he was talking about building an endowment fund. When the two billion, 25 million dollars is all in hand, Using today's dollars, 
This will mean that the Rotarians around the world through clubs and, and district activities will have at their disposal $100 million earnings from the endowment fund every year in perpetuity forevermore. And that is a wonderful legacy that we can all be proud of and something in the spirit of what Arch Klump was, was urging us to look at and to try to achieve. And I think he would be very, very proud of the work that's been going on. Again, the foundation for Rotary's future is being built now. We're building it through the eradication of polio. And when the time comes that we have the world declared and certified polio free, the Rotary Foundation, Rotary International, and all of Rotarians around the world will be able to look back with great pride. But we will also be positioned in a very strong way to look out into the future. And one of the things that we are uh, going to be looking at, we have established, a, we're in the process of finalizing a plan to lay out a strategy of how are we going to be prepared to, to know what we're gonna do after polio has been completed. And what will be our next major priorities going forward? One thing we do know is that we will continue with at least our areas of focus as they are now. And we will probably look at expanding even more our emphasis on peace. And what we are now also doing at the foundation is connecting the dots between the idea of peace and our areas of focus. And we have partnered with the uh, 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 Institute for Economics and Peace an organization that has established a global peace index and has been in business for about 10, 10, 12 years now. And Rotary is working with them to come up with a strategy in order to be able to advance our relationship of how to work with each of our areas of focus and do a better job of identifying how they contribute to peace. And in total, in fact, these are positive peace initiatives that we're going to be working on. And one of the things that's being looked at right now and part of our planning strategy is how are we going to connect, for instance, our Rotary Peace fellow alums that are out around the world? How are we going to bring them back and bring them closer to Rotary and helping us in our areas of focus and other activities that Rotary is doing. Well, these are just a few of the ideas of what is happening right now at the foundation. There is so much more going on, and I know that uh, we could spend a couple hours doing this, but we won't do that right now. I'd like to just wrap up by identifying the fact that all of what's been accomplished and been going on for all these years, 100 years plus one, the first year of the second century of the Rotary Foundation, is only possible, and all of the work that we've done with polio, and all the work that we've done in our areas of focus over the years, is a direct result of three elements that together make Rotary what it is. Rotary clubs, that's where the action is. Rotarians on the ground, we're a bottoms-up organization. Without our Rotary Clubs, there would be no Rotary. So you folks are the ones that are really the driving forces. Rotary International helps to coordinate and organize and to ensure that we build strong clubs to build and recruit leadership uh, at all levels of the organization and to ensure that we have a good public relations and public image uh, effort around the world. And the Rotary Foundation is the third element and that is where the charitable work and the humanitarian service and the resources are provided that can go back down and work with clubs and districts in carrying out rotary activities so together we are one rotary and that is what we are about as an organization in my opinion president ian has spoken very eloquently about many of the priorities and issues that we're facing and again all of the work that we're doing right now again i want to summarize is the foundation for rotary's future is being built now because what we will do when the time comes to make decisions after polio is going to be determined now with the job that we do with polio and that we do with all of the work that we have already on the table for us. So thank you very much, Rotarians, for your support. It's tremendous. We really appreciate it and uh, look forward to a hearing from you uh, in terms of ideas that you might have as we go forward. Thank you very much.